Welcome back, once again adventurers, to Let's Play Steins Gate. In the last episode, Rintaro was left alone on the seventh floor of the radio building on the stairwell, contemplating the impossible choice that now lies before him. And yet he cannot help but ask, how do I save both Kurusu and Mayuri? Because if he stays in the Alpha World line, Mayuri Shina simply cannot be saved. And if he jumps to the Beta World line, Kurusu Makase will have met her end on July 28th. I can't use D-mail. Too much could go wrong. Indeed. Not only is the butterfly effect cruelly unpredictable and capricious, even at the best of times. There is also the chance that we might end up going further and further away from the 1% divergence. I don't want to make the same mistakes again. Well, in all fairness, those mistakes were erased since we cancelled those particular emails. Unfortunately, the silver lining is uh, to all this Excuse me for a moment. Again, my apologies. But as I was saying, the silver lining to all this, a small one at that, is the fact that CERN are no longer interested in um, the IBM 5100 here in Akihabara. Which puts the rounders off our back. But I said small silver lining because it doesn't matter what happens, because as I mentioned before, and as we all witnessed, Mayuri is still going to die, regardless of whether CERN are involved or not. In the end, all I can do is Time Leap. Time Leap he can't save Mayuri, but at least it can delay her death, give me time to find a solution. A very forlorn solution at that. On this world line, Mayuri dies at half past seven on the night of August 17th. That's about 26 hours from now. My battle has no end in sight. If only Suzaha was here, I could have asked her for advice. Unfortunately, she passed away back in 2000, after going back to 1975. So we can't rely on her help. But even alone, I must find a way. So resolved, I start time leaping again to save Mayuri. I've done this before. When Mayuri died the first time at Morika's hands, I tried time leaping to prevent her death. But I only tried running away that time. This time, I try every approach I can think of. I try hiring bodyguards to protect Mayuri. I try taking Mayuri to South America, an entire world away from Japan. I try crippling CERN with attacks on their servers, the ones that don't need the IBN 5100. I try getting Mayuri admitted to a hospital. It's hard given Mayuri's perfect health, but I manage. My goal is to keep her from dying by heart attack. I try everything I can possibly imagine. However, as I suspected, every plan fails. Mayuri dies again and again and again. Sometimes it's murder, sometimes an accident. But every time I leap, Mayuri dies. Maybe it really is impossible to resist fate. As long as I remain on, the, on this world line, Mayuri can't be saved. Fate will kill her every single time. That is world line convergence for you. From Mayuri's perspective, she only dies once. And yet, we're actually inadvertently making the situation a whole lot worse. Because if we remember from Mayuri's conversation with her late grandmother, 
She has what she thinks are dreams, but are in fact the uh, events of her past selves in the other world lines. So every time she dies, every time we leap to a new world line to prevent it from happening, she still remembers regardless. And we have seen her die dozens of times, all because of me. And yet, it no longer affects me as it used to. Little by little, I've grown desensitized to her death. In the beginning, I felt unbearable pain every time I saw her die, a murderous rage towards the ones responsible. Now, I feel nothing. The realization stuns me. After dozens of leaps, I finally realize what should have been obvious from the beginning. I never leap back more than 26 hours. Why? I could go back as far as August 11th, one whole week in the past. Yet I never do. Why? Because I know that even if I do, nothing will change. I don't believe that anything will change. Every time Mayuri dies, I find myself thinking, another failure, what went wrong this time? I calmly analyze Mayuri's death, then take my data and head for the time leap machine with a sigh, like a gamer forced for the umpteenth time to restart a particularly difficult stage. I'm just going through the motions. I didn't even realize until this moment how routine it had all become. Now that I have, my actions suddenly seem meaningless. I can't take another step. And that's how I find myself here, sitting motionless in front of the time leap machine. I've been staring at it for hours. When we got caught in that evening shower on the radio building rooftop, my clothes got soaked. But now they're completely dry. My body temperature has dropped, but I don't have the energy to warm myself for the shower. I sluggishly get from my feet and pick up the headset. The sight of it fills me with resignation. Resignation, that's all. There is no desperate drive to save Mayuri, no hope that this time I might succeed. Those emotions are long gone. In truth, they have been gone since my argument with Kurusu. Deep down, I always knew sh that she was right. I pretended not to see it. I told myself that the time leap machine could solve everything. But that was just an excuse, a last attempt to satisfy my ego. And not even the mania of the insane mad scientist Hoin Kiyoma can save Mayuri. In the end, all I'm doing is... Couldn't have put it better myself, Kurusu. I turn around in surprise, and there I see Kurusu standing in the doorway. I would ask why she's here, but um, since we've been time leaping over and over again, it stands to reason that the conversation that Rintaro and Kurusu had, or more specifically the argument they had on the seventh floor of the radio building, never took place. Or maybe it did. I don't know. I don't know anymore. I thought she never wanted to see me again. So did I, but there it is. Why is she here? Nande. Kurusu ignores my question and fixes me with her usual glare. Time leap Indeed. All we're doing is just reliving the same few days over and over and over again. We're not changing world lines, we're not jumping to a new era in time. We're just on permanent repeat, like a broken record. You don't have to tell me. I already know. I know all too well. In the end, all I'm doing is running away. 
Running away from responsibility, running from the decision. The decision, <clears throat> excuse me, the decision to let either Mayuri die or Kurusu. In the end, it's, well, it's not so much as saving anyone anymore by this point. If I had known I would have to make this choice, then I would have refused Suzaha when she entrusted me with her mission. I wonder about that. We've taken the hopes and dreams of friends and enemies alike and dashed them to the four corners of the earth. That is a very terrible sign. It shows us that Rintaro has reached his breaking point. In other words, we're slowly devolving into a an emotionless automaton of sorts. Maybe. But you should know by now, Rintaro, that it is a colossal mistake to deal with maybes. Or maybe, just maybe, we have reached the end of our rope. We have reached the end of what is possible with the time leap machine. A little bit hypocritical of me, I know, given what I just said a few seconds ago, but um, it had to be said. And yet it doesn't hurt enough. She suddenly looks away. And she leans against the wall and smiles bitterly. Indeed. After all. Once we, if we decide to go back to the beta world line, your life as we know it will end. Is Kurisu running too? From what? We may very well at that. I think it's safe to say that our heart is already broken, Kurusu Makase. Unfortunately, we cannot. It's one thing to say it. Unfortunately, there are other factors that make this decision all the more harder. But she's right. I have no other options left. No more D-mails, no more time leaps. There's no perfect world where both Kurisu and Mayuri live. Maybe there are things I have yet to try, but I'm certain that all of them will end in vain. As long as I stay on this world line, Mayuri will die. And if I go to the beta world line, 
Kurusu will die. We'll never be able to talk like this again. And it's only been 20 days since we met. And yet. Feels a lot longer given how many times we've leapt back and f back through time. Memories of Kurusu flash before my eyes. Memories of the first time we encountered Kurusu on the Alpha World Line after the events of the Beta World Line. Memories of Kurusu giving her lecture at the Akihabara Tech Forum. Memories of the moment that Rintaro inducted Kurusu Makase into the Future Gadget Laboratory as Lab Member 004, otherwise known as Christina. And I hate to explain a joke, but I'm going to anyway. For those of you who haven't figured it out, look at the names Kurusu and Christina. Now, what happens when you take off the U and add Tina to the end of Kurusu's first name. You get Kuristina, anglicized as Christina. And I just ruined the joke for everyone. Memories of Kurusu refusing to use the D-mails or the time leap machine on her own behalf. And memories of the completion of the time leap machine on that terrible fateful day of August 13th. The first night that Mayuri Shina was killed in cold blood by both CERN's rounders and the world line itself. And memories of the of one of the rare fleeting moments in which Rutaro Okabe bears his soul to Kurusu Makase. If only for a moment. And memories of a promise that we will never be able to keep once we go to the Beta World Line. The promise that Rintaro made to Kurusu to travel to Aomori to see her estranged father and attempt to patch things up. All these memories and more. And memories of Kurusu being a pillar of support in, time, in the time of Rintaro's heartbreak and heartache regarding Mayuri. And memories of that time in the stairwell. So much has happened these past 20 days. We argued, we exchanged insults. We made incredible discoveries together, and when c confronted with the implications, we shared our fears. Whenever I heard a dead end of my struggle to save Mayuri, I always turned to Kurusu for help. She always listened. She always believed in me. Except when she didn't. But that was initially. 
and I helped her too, when she was distraught over her father, even though you immediately jumped back into the persona of Horween Kiyoma just moments afterwards, I believe. We promised to go to Aomori together. Without this girl genius on our side, we would not have the time leap machine. We wouldn't have been able to reach this point. Proud, passionate Kurusu Makase. Always strong, or at least pretending to be. A little nosy too, and serious to a fault. Before I knew it, she had become the center of a lab. The lab, I should say. From the very beginning, I was attracted to her radiant confidence. I found myself mesmerized by her every gesture, hanging on her every word. I listened enraptured whenever she presented her latest theory, such as with the development of the Time Leap Machine. At the end of the day, the reason I never called her by her name was because I was too embarrassed. Yep, you saw it here, adventurers. That was the reason that Rintaro Okabe rarely called Kurisu by her actual first name. I admired her, I longed for her, and I didn't want to admit it to myself. Only now do I realize the truth, and what a truth it is. I love her. And there is nothing more to say on that subject. And that is why I so want so desperately to save her. She's not just a fellow lab member. To me, Kurisu is far more than that. And I think Rintaro can grudgingly confess to himself that she is anything but his assistant or at the very least, the assistant of Horuin Kiyoma. And yet, to save Mayuri, I have no choice. In the end, everything she said was right. I am... You are... You can't help me. Not if we want to save Mayuri, we can't. In a desperate attempt to hold back my tears, I bite my lip tightly. The taste of blood seep spreads through my mouth. Because that's what happened. The first time we, well, you and her ran into each other in the alpha, in the beta world line. My apologies. Because it is already fated to happen on the beta world line. I pound my fist on the table. Silence. Nothing moves. Outside the window is only darkness. Is this what it's, it's like to be the only person left in the world? Indeed they will, because... As far as they are concerned on the Beta World line, you died before you ever got to join the lab. In other words, the time you spent as Lab Mem 004 never existed. <laughs> as much as Rintaro is loath to admit it, he has no choice. Kurisu's cheeks start to redden. And she turns away. 
私のこと覚えててくれる That is the gift and the curse of reading Steiner. That wonderful, ineffable ability that gives Rintaro Okabe the ability to retain memories from alternate world lines that he's traveled from and to. Which means that once he travels the debated world line, the only one who will remember that all of this ever happened is Rintaro. Her voice is barely a whisper. He couldn't forget even if he wanted to. And he definitely doesn't want to, Kurosu Makase. As Rintaro himself said a while ago, in the beginning, if he had been faced with the choice to save Mayuri and Kurusu, he would have chosen my, his childhood friend over a complete stranger. Unfortunately, at this moment in time and space, Kurusu Makase is anything but a stranger to Rintaro Okabe. As I said before, what a truth it is. I just sound cynical here, Kurusu Makase. But, um, you have captured the heart of not only Rintaro Okabe, but Hoin Kiyomo as well. Although I don't know how much of an honor that is. Unfortunately, there is no f such formula. It doesn't exist. Kurusu is getting flustered for some reason. And Kurusu is trying to recite a scientific formula to try and calm her nerves, but all she ends up uh, achieving is nothing more than uh, gibberish ranting. I just go to the tips menu to uh, tell you what ACTH stands for. It stands for Adrenocorticotropic Hormone, secreted in response to stress. And I'm amazed that I actually pronounced that correctly. At least I believe I've pronounced that correctly. And yet, for some reason, uh, this line doesn't have any dialogue to it. Kuris. But Rintaro uh, has to calm her down before she ru one runs wild on a scientific tangent. I speak her name. Our eyes meet. Oreba. Omae ga suki da. The penny drops. Kurusu looks away. Her face is bright red. Oh my well. You should probably be a little bit more specific with that line of questioning, Rintaro. How did she feel about you, or how did she feel about Ho in Kiyoma? <laughs> and awkward silence. <laughs> Uh, 
Kurisu suddenly looks me straight in the eye. Her face is still red, but her expression is firm. She walks straight up to me, grabs me by the collar, and jerks me towards her. I've only just realized now just how incredibly tall Rintaro actually is. Did I make her mad? Y yes, but not for the reasons you think. Perhaps Kurisu hates me for some reason. Indeed she does. Given the expression on her face. Maybe she really d did mean all those insults she said to me. About wanting to stab an electrode through your hippocampus? She says that to everyone. In fact, I wonder who she hasn't said that to. That would be really sad. Yes, it would be. I so slowly lick my trembling lips and timidly try to ask a question. Why? Very well then, as you wish. I do as I'm told, though I still don't know why she's so angry. I think I can guess. My collar is still in Kurisu's grip. <laughs> Abruptly, I feel a soft sensation against my lips. The faint scent of citrus tickles my nose. When I open my eyes in surprise, I see Kurisu's face scant millimeters away. And then I understand what has happened. She's kissing me. Her lips are very warm. My mind goes blank. And I may... Sorry, let me read that again. I am unable to think. I want to stay like this forever. But soon our lips separate. <laughs> Kurisu looks down shyly. And Rintaro is at a complete loss for words. That Sundere complex will be the your undoing, Kurisu Makase. Take it from me, Kurisu. Rintaro Okabe would never break that promise above all others. That may be true, however, in this instance, I question your logic. それに、Yeah, your logic is is falling apart right here and now. Elaborative rehearsal. In psychology, the act of transferring short-term memory to long-term memory. This is done by attaching meaning to the matter to be remembered, or by relating the matter to some other familiar memory. Well, your explanation is uh, certainly correct, but your reasoning is flawed. Why? 
You have nothing to worry about on that front, because he won't forget about you, no matter what. My heart fills with love for Kurosu as he makes so frantic excuses. What a relief. Kurusu wasn't mad. She was just trying to hide her embarrassment. I think she's still mad. I think she's still mad. I want to be with her even more. I want to talk with her even more. I want to learn e even more about her. But I know that wish can never come true. My chest tightens. I feel like I'm suffocating. Desperate to keep my emotions under control, I place my own hands on top of Kurosu's, which is still grabbing my collar. Zanin <laughs> 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 Even now, it seems that Rintaro can't help its Chinubiu nature. I remember playfully kissing Mayuri in elementary school, so that's what happened. And just a little while ago, I forcibly kissed Morika to silence her. That doesn't count. A, because we, um... Yeah, mainly because we, uh, erased the events of that world line. I was on another world line, and now it never happened, so I guess it doesn't count. Indeed it doesn't. I wouldn't necessarily call that kissing, either. So... Anta... I'm lying, of course. I've never felt such an intense kiss as that. The shock was like a lightning bolt to the brain. But still, I'm lying. Because if I miss this opportunity, I'll never be able to touch Kurusu again. This is my last chance. To make doubly sure, I suppose. <gasps> Kurusu fidgets. She usually glares at me harshly, but now she's avoiding my eyes. I decide to take the initiative. I wrap my arm gently around Kurusu's waist and pull her slender body against mine. Kurusu looks up at me shyly. What is she worried I do? I run my fingers softly through her hair. And I slowly bend down. We're both shy, so we end up pecking at each other's lips like two small birds. Sparrows, most likely. Then we draw back and look at each other. Kurusu's eyes are wet. Tears are running down her cheeks. I kiss them away. They're salty. Or they're tears, what do you expect? As I said many times over, and I'll say again, we won't. We press our lips together again. 
Stronger than the first time. Longer than the first time. I never want to let go. We embrace each other tightly. Our feelings too powerful to contain. <laughs> we seek each other's warmth again and again. <gasps> but this moment cannot last forever. Locked in our embrace which we feel each other's breath. We feel each other's scent. We feel each other's taste. Kurusu's whisper resonates through our embrace. Indeed it is. I'm honestly not sure how that would help. Einstein That is true. That is very true. Ne, Okabe. So I said it on the Totemo Romantic. I actually think that Albert Einstein might actually have a chuckle at that sentiment. Totemo sits in I mono. How does Kurusu feel about me? In the end, she never really answered my question. I would say that she said definitely did. Just not with words. Early morning, Akihabara Station. Kurusu is standing before the entrance with a huge suitcase beside her. She waves to me shyly as I approach. And she blushes and shoots me her usual glare. After that kiss, Kurusu went back to her hotel to pack. That suitcase must hold everything that she brought to Japan. She's going back to America. As she should, she would. So did you? I seriously doubt that that would actually be a good idea. In other circumstances, maybe. But here, no. It seems that Kurusu understands. Ouch. Joke. <laughs> That's a very funny one. Kurusu looks like she's about to cry. I'm sure I look just as sad. But I won't cry. I don't have that right. Take me a a gift of sorts. I hand her future gadget number two, Bamboo Helicam. It's a bamboo helicopter equipped with a CCD camera, which allows it to record video in the air. A truly groundbreaking invention. But sadly, due to its constant high-speed rotation, the video it produces tends to cause motion sickness, understandable. <laughs> <laughs> so 
Consider it a token of uh, goodwill from the Future Gadget Lab. I wanted to give a Future Gadget number 7 ghost in the ball, but it was too big. Kurisu accepts Bamboo Halicam with a strained smile. And then, silence. No words of farewell. We just look at each other. Aomori. Would that it were otherwise. Indeed, until the whole CERN Worldline Convergence Mayuri Death situation. That we shall. Kurisu spreads her arms wide. Without a moment's hesitation, I step forward and embrace the girl genius one last time. Okabe. Kanbatte. Genki de. Kurisu smiles faintly then turns and walks towards the entrance with suitcase in hand. I watch her go, unable to move a muscle. I want to stop her. I want to wrap my arms around her and tell her to stay with me forever. But I can't. This is what we decided. To save Mayuri. To save the future. I'm sorry, Kurisu. I can't save you. Kurisu will disappear. She'll be left behind on this world line. There is no place for her in the coming world. Indeed we shall. I don't know whether Kurisu hears my words. She keeps walking. Stride steady. Back straight. Long silky hair fluttering in the wind. She's quickly fading into the distance. But I can tell. I see her shoulders trembling. We will never meet again. Our world lines will never cross again. I'm glad I met you, Kurosu. I would have been lost without you. I love you. Goodbye. I stand there in the entrance as commuters fly pa file past until long after... She has vanished from sight, afraid that any motion, any thought, might cause the tears to fall. But our path is set. So that's the Indeed. Indeed we shall. But that will be in the next episode of Let's Play Steinsgate. When we return, adventurers, we shall erase the initial D mail that was intercepted by CERN's Echelon Network and jump from the Alpha World Line to the Beta World Line. A world line in which Mayuri Shina lives and Kurisu Makase does not. As always, adventurers, until next we meet.